Hello parents, uh, good evening. I am Dr. Lalit Mittal from Giggles Clinic. So today we will be discussing about how the brain functions differs in a neurotypical child compared to an autistic child. Now it's a very complex mechanism and I would try to explain it in a simplified manner to the best of my abilities. Now what happens in a neurotypical child compared to an autistic child, how the brain differs the growth. Now focus on this diagram, this is a chart. These are the x axis and this is the y axis. On the y axis, I have plotted the brain size of the brain growth, whereas in an uh, x, uh, x axis, I have plotted the age of the child in years. Now, what happens in the first four to five years of life, which are very, very crucial for any child, this upper line is for an autistic child, whereas this lower line, the blue line, it is for the neurotypical child. So, compared to an in, in a uh, first coming to a neurotypical child, suppose in first four to five years of age, the brain growth in a neurotypical child reaches to around 50 to 60 percent. This is an arbitrary figure and just for the purpose of explanation. So in first four to five years of child, if the uh, growth of the brain in a neurotypical child reaches to around 50 to 60 percent and then after five to six years, it remains in a plateau phase and continues. But if we compare the growth of the brain in an autistic child, it shows an exponential rise more than that of a neurotypical child. So by four to five years of age, if, an autist, if a neurotypical brain grows by 40 to 50 percent, it overshoots that growth and reaches around 60 to 70 percent. And then after five to six years, it remains in a plateau phase and then it comes down, it remains in a same uh, growth as compared to a neurotypical child, which is indicated by dotted line or sometimes the growth reduces as compared to a neurotypical child, it further reduces. Initially, first four, five years, it was very, very high and then after six to seven years, it reduces and undershoots the normal growth pattern in a typical neurotypical child. So now this, uh, this is the main crux of the whole uh, lecture. Now how, what are the functions, what are the brain structures which are involved, how they differ, how the growth is affected, I will try to explain them each and every point. Now this is a very simple hypothetical diagram of the brain which I have plotted. This, uh, this, there are three structures in the brain or the, there are three parts of the brain, the forebrain, the midbrain, the hindbrain. The name itself suggests, suggests that is a forebrain that is the front portion, the midbrain which is the middle portion and the third portion that is the hindbrain, hind means the last portion. So you just forget about this midbrain portion, just focus on the forebrain and the hindbrain. Forebrain is the front. Now first we will discuss about the hindbrain which is the last portion of the brain. Now in the hindbrain there are two structures which I have plotted. One is called as the cerebellum which is the dead structure. Another one is the black structure which is known as the amygdala. Now there is a disturbances of uh, brain functioning these two structures. How does it happen? First comes to cerebellum. What is cerebellum? Cerebellum is a structure. It is a neuron dense structure. And what are neurons? Neurons we know that these are the backbone of the brain. They are responsible for transmitting the signals to every part of the body for generation of signals for transmitting. So cerebellum is involved in proprioception, it is involved in fine motor activities, along with that it is involved in language and cognition. So what happens, they say that there is an overgrowth of this cerebellum in the first four to five years of life, as a result of which what happens, their functions in affected. And other important thing which they say that there is an hypoplasia of these neuron dense structure. Obviously, these neurons are involved in carrying out the functions and transmitting signal when their growth is affected, the numbers are affected, obviously the function or the activity, the ability of the child to carry out the functions is also affected. Another important thing they say, Purkinje fibers. Now what are these Purkinje fibers? These Purkinje fibers are the main source of output of the information. Now they say that there is a decrease in the number and as well as the size of these Purkinje fibers. To explain it in a more simplified manner, this is a square which I have made, this is the cerebellum. In the cerebellum, you have a structure, this is a red structure which is known as a Purkinje fiber. They are responsible for the output. For example, if I say Lalit, get me a glass of water. So this is the input which the Lalit's brain is receiving. Now the Purkinje fibers, which are the main source of output, they will tell the, what, what action the Lalit has to do, whether he has to get a glass of water, whether he has to get a glass of milk. So this is the output. So this output the child is not able to perform and practically we have seen that if we give a command to an autistic child, uh, Lalit get me a glass of water, he will stand there still, his processing will be slowed, again we will give him a command, Lalit get me a glass of water. So by giving repeated commands, these Purkinje fibers will get stimulated and as a result, over a period of time after giving 3 to 4 efforts, the child will able to get a glass of water. But that is also not sure, he may, 
he may receive the signal to just go but he may not receive the output that what he has to bring why because all these things happen because of the decrease in this purkinje fiber the size as well as the numbers another important point of practical point is that there are certain drugs which are responsible for decreasing the number and size of these purkinje fiber these are cns stimulants so which are used cesodon methylphenidate that is why we have seen most of the parents also complain that if we give these drugs uh, cesodon initially they will be very fine the child will be calm down he will be relaxed he will be set to one place but over a period of time say around more than 6 months to year the child becomes totally dull he is not responding to any command he is just sitting he is lying why because these drugs they decrease the number of these purkinje fibers in both size and number by 20 to 30 percent so that is why uh it is better not to go for these drugs over a longer period of time they can only give you a transient effect should not be continued over a longer period of time because of these harmful effects uh, so exactly i would say in a true sense they are actually hampering the brain function they are further deteriorating the functions of the brain in an autistic child other drugs which have been known to cause are antiepileptics like methyl uh, in some studies they have shown like uh, valproate which is also responsible for decreasing the size and number of these uh, purkinje fibers another important structure which is there in the hin brain which is involved in malfunctioning of the brain in autistic child is the amygdala now what is this amygdala amygdala is a structure in the hin brain or the last portion of the brain which is involved in maintaining the emotions like fear aggression hyperactivity calmness so whatever uh, aggression hyperactive emotion the child has to be done that are maintained by this amygdala what happens in amygdala again there is an overgrowth of this amygdala in the first 4 5 years of life and there is a decrease in the size of the neurons in amygdala now one thing you should remember that overgrowth excess growth and undergrowth is always harmful it's as simple as to say that an undernourished child is as harmful as an obese child a 5 year old child if a normal weight of 5 year old child is 18 to 20 if a 5 year old child is having a weight of 10 kg and on the other spectrum if a 5 year old child is having a weight of 30 kg both are equally dangerous both are equally harmful and both can have different problems so that is why the growth of any part of the organ has to be appropriate in an appropriate manner and in an appropriate duration that is why this overgrowth of amygdala and cerebellum are responsible for the changes of malfunctioning in the neurotypical in an autistic child another important thing is that beside decreasing the size of the neuron in amygdala there are some important things which we know that is excitatory inhibitors and inhibitory neurotransmitters what are neurotransmitters they are responsible for transmitting the signals so uh, a lot of time we have seen that most of the parents they might have been suggested by the clinicians to go for the gaba test to go for a glutamate test what are these gaba and glutamate gaba is an excitatory neurotransmitter which always keep the child in an excited state hyperactivity aggression restlessness whereas uh, glutamate is an inhibitory neurotransmitter which will keep the child in a state of calmness so this balance is always disturbed in an autistic child it is a natural it is an inborn problem because of the the neuroanatomy of an autistic child is such that that this balance is never maintained and it is always dominated by the excitatory neurotransmitter that is gaba so what happens over a period of time when we give these drugs since uh, they might be suppressed but when you keep giving these drugs uh, the the threshold levels of these uh, gaba they increases so as a result of which over a period of time when you give it uh, these drugs over a longer period of time more than 6 to 6 uh, months to 1 year the levels again keep on rising so there are no drugs which can maintain this balance the best thing is that you have to carry out lot of physical activities do vigorous exercises because uh, the best thing is that uh, go for vigorous exercises heavy physical exercises for at least 1 hour daily why because when you keep on doing these exercises the child will channelize his energy his excess energy will be drained the levels of excited neurotransmitters will be reduced whereas that of inhibitory will might better so over a period of time gradually the body will get adapted and the levels of these neurotransmitters will maintain a balance now coming to the third most portion that is called the frontal cortex now this frontal cortex is the most developed portion of the brain 